Hi, my name is Brad Neal. I'm with the University of Indianapolis. Welcome to Chemistry 150 for the fall of 2020. We're not meeting the way that I had hoped that we would meet, but there's some extenuating circumstances that I hope you'll understand. I would like to talk with you briefly about the class and try to set some expectations here at the beginning um, so that you have an idea of what I'll be looking for um, as your participation in course and give you some ideas of what it's going to take in order to succeed in this course. So let's go ahead and let's get started. What this class is, is a college level course. You are going to have required readings and I will be providing video content to you. You're going to need to read the readings and watch the videos on the timetable that I present them to you. Now, every week I'll have a page up on ACE where it will say, here's what you need to do by this date. It's going to be up to you to get it done by that date. Now, this course isn't going to be completely online. It's a hybrid course for the foreseeable future. So I will be presenting topics to you via readings and video assignments, but we're going to actually meet face to face as much as we can, where we're going to practice problems with one another. So a traditional lecture format isn't going to happen here where we meet three times a week and I talk for 50 minutes and we have a discussion about the topics. What we're, when we meet, we're going to be actually practicing problems together. And you'll get um, some problems in terms of homeworks and as well as what I call discussion packets, which are extra questions that I've kind of collected over the years and worked on that I think will help you in your understanding of chemistry and to hone your critical thinking skills. I'm going to be available to you to help you with any um, issues that you have via office hours and via those discussion sections. Office hours at this time are, I'm planning on having them uh, be done virtually, but if it becomes apparent that that isn't working, we'll change things up as much as we can to meet your needs. Practice problems and tests are going to occur in a face-to-face -face format unless our situation changes. So you will be required to come to campus to take your tests. Grading for this course is going to be based on achievement. Um, time on task, how much time you put into something isn't going to be how your grade is earned. Many times in many classes, as long as you put the effort in, you are able to get a passing grade. Here, you really have to not only put the time in, but you have to actually have the mastery of the topic. And maybe you can hear my dog barking right now. Recording at home is always a good time. Perfect practice is what makes perfect. Uh, if you think about throwing a ball at a basketball goal, um, if you just throw the ball up willy-nilly style, that doesn't make you good at shooting a free throw. If you're going to practice free throws, you want to actually have proper form and set up, et cetera, so that you get good the proper ways at shooting a free throw so you maximize your chance of success. Same thing is going to happen for chemistry problems. What this course is not going to be is a cakewalk. Um, it's going to, it's a difficult class um, just by its very nature. Many of you right now watching this video, uh, if you had it up to you, probably would never take a chemistry class ever again. But your major has decided that actually in order for you to achieve in the kinds of life goals that you have, chemistry is important. Um, I'm here to help and I'm here to try to help you reach mastery or uh, some kind of not only just content uh, knowledge, but also critical thinking skill knowledge. But that's going to require you to be a self-advocate and let me know when you're having trouble with something. Um, so that goes right into point two here. If you don't engage 
with the course, you probably won't get as much out of it as if you had engaged. I think that if you ask the students who, tip, who have taken general chemistry in the past, the ones who have said, yeah, I didn't necessarily like chemistry, but I engaged in the course and it actually ended up being okay. It may not have been my favorite, but it was totally doable. The ones that engaged with the course have that attitude. The people who say, I didn't really want to engage with chemistry and I didn't engage with chemistry are the ones who typically have the worst time. And if you love chemistry, hey, that's fantastic. Chemistry is pretty great. I'm more than happy to talk with you um, about chemistry as much as you wouldn't like to talk. Now, just a little bit about myself. Um, so I was an undergrad at Bellarmine University, which is a small school, uh, very much like UND. I went to graduate school at the University of Kansas. Um, while at Kansas, I studied inorganic organometallic chemistry. Um, and specifically, I made uh, small molecules uh, that had never been made before to study their electrical structure. Specifically, I studied molecules that could potentially behave as electrical wires for molecular electronics. Um, and one of the ways that I studied that was creating the molecules, but then I studied their electronic properties by making what's called a self-assembled monolayer on a gold atomically flat gold surface. That's what that gold 111 basically is telling you. After graduate school, I came to the University of Indianapolis to teach in 2012. Um, and I have been doing chemistry for a very long time before that. So back in high school, I think it was my junior year in high school, uh, that's when I started tutoring chemistry. So I've been at this for a while. I've seen a lot of different students with a lot of different learning styles, uh, learning strategies, et cetera. I'm more than happy. I want to, in fact, help you and you will help you be able to be successful in chemistry class. Um, and I've had a lot of experience with a lot of different kinds of students. Um, so if you're having dif difficulties, please let me know. And I'm more than happy to sit down with you and craft a particular strategy that would work best for you. I'm not going to try to give you just these big platitudes that say, well, this works for most students, so why don't you try this? We will sit down uh, virtually or otherwise, and we'll try to figure out something that's going to work for you. So why should you care about this course? Um, well, for many of you, this is a gateway course in that your, your major, if you're a chemistry or biology major, your major requires you to take additional chemistry courses. So we're going to be giving you foundational knowledge that you will need for the rest of your chemistry career, even if that chemistry career is pretty small. Um, so you should pay attention and you should try to learn the concepts uh, the best of your ability. Now, if you're saying that's cool, I'm not going to actually be doing chemistry. I'm going to medical school, I'm going to physical therapy. I'm going to be an occupational therapist. Cool. Your majors in your career fields also have identified chemistry as being important. And from conversations with physical therapists, and occupational therapists, and medical school uh, students and doctors, um, the thing that they say is that chemistry has a unique ability to teach critical thinking skills in an abstract manner. You have to take these different kinds of ideas that are coming from uh, what may not seem like directly connected uh, topics and make that connection. And that's the kind of thing that does matter in occupational therapy, in medical school, et cetera. It's saying, okay, I know this little piece of information, I know this little piece of information, how do I link these together to come up with a solution? And that's what occupational therapists, physical therapists, and medical uh, practitioners say in common about what is good about a chemistry uh, background and why chemistry is important. So what are our overall goals for this course? Well, in light of those critical thinking skills being so important, we really want to help you get good at those critical thinking skills. Um, we're going to ask you higher order reasoning questions 
Um, so if you aren't familiar with uh, Bloom's taxonomy, go ahead and type into Google um, Bloom's taxonomy, and then you can come back to this video or wait until the end, we're almost done. We are going to be asking you higher order critical thinking uh, kinds of questions like application and beyond level questions in this course um, to help you develop those scientific critical thinking skills. It's going to be different from a logic course, uh, but logic do, will kind of come into play, but we're not going to explicitly teach you logic. Another goal is to establish fundamentals of chemistry um, for chemistry and other science courses. So you're going to be learning, uh, many of you are going to be learning a whole new set of vocabulary. Um, the vocab skills are going to be critical. We're going to be introducing terms that you may or may not have ever heard of before. You'll have to learn what those terms mean and be able to use them appropriately, not only in a sentence, but then be able to say, oh, this is what the enthalpy of this reaction numeric value is. Well, what is enthalpy? And then how does it actually apply to the question that's really being asked? Um, but if you don't know the definition of enthalpy, that'll be really hard to do. We're going to utilize mathematics to solve real world problems. Um, so we're not going to be teaching you any advanced math. I think the most advanced math that we're going to be doing, um, it's probably going to be multiplication division, realistically. Um, but we'll be using math to specifically answer questions about chemistry. We're going to give you a foundational knowledge of current theories to help us explain the natural world, um, both on the macro, meaning the scale that we can see, and the atomic scales. So we're not going to get into necessarily the absolute bleeding edge of chemical theory or atomic theory um, because we have to lay down a foundational knowledge first for you to understand that. But as appropriate, we will try to shine the light and point you to articles that do involve the topics that we've talked about in the course um, that are on that bleeding edge of chemistry knowledge. But we're specifically going to break it down into a language that if you know your vocab skills, you'll be able to understand what you're reading. So that is a very uh, brief overview of what general chemistry um, is and how this course is going to be uh, set up as. Very brief, I understand that. Please read the A site for some more details and there will be additional videos as well to help uh, elucidate content. If you have questions at any point in time during the semester, I strongly encourage you to use the messages uh, feature within ACE to send me a message to ask me about the course um, or the question that you have. There will be a separate video that's going to go over the ACE site as well, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you very much. I hope you all have a great day.